Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Bungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. As always on Red Carpet, we bring you the latest in entertainment news, what's going on in fashion, in sports, in film and television from around the world. Now, it's been four months since the WHO announced COVID-19 as a global pandemic. We've seen lockdowns taking place in cities, from Kampala to Nairobi to here in Washington, D.C. But as we see the relaxing of these lockdown restrictions, people getting back to work slowly, we are also covering other stories, including the protests we've seen in major cities around the world, from here, Washington, D.C., uh, to Minnesota, where George Floyd was killed in the custody of a policeman a couple of weeks ago. Those two stories have been dominating the news cycle, and we continue to cover them and bring them to you. And with that said, Let's get on with the show. Many around the world have taken to the streets to protest following the death of George Floyd, the 46-year-old black man who died in Minnesota after he was handcuffed and pleaded for air as a white police officer pressed the knee on his neck. VOS Czech Tierra takes us to Malcolm X Park in Washington, D.C., where the African diaspora gathered to show their support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Africans and African Americans came together with their families for a peaceful demonstration in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Miss Africa USA, Charlene Grice, is from Liberia. We are not just a subject to be killed, to be pushed over. We are precious, we are purposeful, we are put on this earth to do great things, and we are not supposed to be identified by the colors of our skin. Eugene Peua Pelina is from the Central African Republic. He says there must be a fundamental change in the way police treat black people. It's not normal that in 2020, some people continue to be just uh, mistreated like less than animals in America. For example, you cannot touch a dog. Young bro brother from America, the black brother from America, sometimes they are very young. And the police sometimes, the one that is not good, push them, uh, provoke them. And then unfortunately, they react to a certain way. The bad cops is taking advantage and then kill them. African-American Alan Kelly believes different African communities coming together at a time like this helps them feel empowered. I think it's very important uh, to see the solidarity from everybody from these different countries and, you know, that level of awareness that people have about it. I think the Black Lives Matter movement is empowered when you have black people from every diaspora. So it's good to see that, that you know, the African continent out here, the Caribbean, I think that shows our strength. There is also support from the theatrical world as the Broadway cast of Ain't Too Proud came together to support the Black Lives Matter movement with a virtual performance of the song, I Wish It Would Rain. The show follows the rise and fall of the supergroup The Temptations, but is on hold through at least September because of coronavirus. Now to sports where players are taking a stance and a knee in support of Black Lives Matter. After scoring a goal in the game against Eibar, Real Madrid's Marcelo took a knee and raised his fist, an action often seen as a symbol of the black power movement of the 1960s and 70s and echoed by today's Black Lives Matter movement. Sharing a photo on Instagram, he wrote, Happy to be back with Real Madrid. Happy to have scored a goal, but even happier to see all the changes in the world. Now it's time. We must use the power we have and start making real changes. Hashtag M12, hashtag Tupac. Former American football star Colin Kaepernick began kneeling during the national anthem in 2016 to protest police brutality. He was not resigned by his team and has not played since. Four years later, NFL commissioner Roger Goodell 
now says it was a mistake to criticize kneeling players. In a video posted on Instagram, he apologized on behalf of the league, saying, We, the National Football League, condemn racism and the systematic oppression of black people. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We, the National Football League, believe Black Lives Matter. Support for the Black Lives Matter movement extends to Africa, where there have been many demonstrations following George Floyd's death. In Senegal, street artists are creating a fresco to show their support. For VOA, Estelle Njanjo has the story from Dakar. In Dakar, anti-racist protests have found their way through urban culture. A dozen of street artists involved in social justice in Senegal have created a fresco to support the Black Lives Matter movement. This wall took two days of work and has been dedicated to African decolonial leaders and figures of black liberation in the United States. First of all, it marks on consciences, because it is in the urban setting. The people are directly alerted by images. These are images that they are not used to seeing. Here in Senegal, walking past a wall where a Harriet Tubman is represented, it pushes young people to wonder who Harriet Tubman is. An artistic initiative supported by the youth of Dakar. Last time we saw a black man killed in the United States of America, everyone protested against this racist action, which continues to spread. Since grade school, we have been taught equality between men. They come to give us a message of awareness, to show us that they also demonstrate, but in an artistic way. Last week, a symbolic protest against police brutality against people of color in the United States and France took place in Dakar. The 2016 Voice Africa contestant Aida Sok improvised a song about unity and power. With her friends, she organized the protest in a few days on social media. Fighting racism is something that she can relate as a former U.S. resident. I think that day when I went there and released it with my, I released it also artistically by just, it was something that I just instantly knew that it matched what I was feeling towards this situation. And it was not just about black Americans, it was about American, uh, black Americans, it was about black people, it was about Africans, it was about anybody that be going through oppression. Protesters are planning to increase their numbers through organizing a new protest in July. Estelle Jonjo for VOA News, Dakar, Senegal. And in fashion news, Somali-American model Halima Aden is helping protect frontline workers by creating face masks and turbans specifically for those who wear hijabs just like her. If you recall, Eden made Sports Illustrated history by becoming the first Muslim model to be featured in the magazine's famous swimsuit edition wearing a hijab and a bikini. The model who used to work in a hospital has joined forces with the tech company Anywhere and Allure magazine to create face masks for hijab wearing health workers that include matching face coverings and turbans. Eden says that as many hijab wearing women are working at healthcare facilities, I want to make sure they have a comfortable option for wearing a mask while keeping their hair covered. Adding that it can also get hot running around at the pace healthcare workers are right now. So a breathable fabric was a must. And let's move to film to big news involving Netflix and Nigeria. The streaming giant has signed a deal with Nigerian producer Mo Abudu's Ebony Life to create two original series, including a film adaptation of Death and the King's Horseman, a play by Nobel Prize winner Wale Soyinka, and a series based on Lola Shonayin's best-selling debut novel, 
the secret lives of Baba Segi's wives. And fans of the South African mystery drama series Blood and Water must be thrilled to hear it's returning for a second season on Netflix. The hit series was the first ever African original series to be ranked first on Netflix in 10 different countries, including the US, after it premiered last month. The South African Netflix account tweeted, quote, No more further questions. Season 2 is on the way. Hashtag blood and water. Giving its fans something to look forward to. The drama stars Ama Kwamata as Plen Kumalo, a teenager who transfers to a prestigious school in Cape Town and investigates the disappearance of her older sister who was abducted at birth. Director Spike Lee is speaking out about his inspiration for the Netflix war drama The Five Bloods that chronicles the stories of black Vietnam War veterans. Spike Lee bookends the movie with Muhammad Ali and other black activist figures from the 60s, framing it as not just a war film but an inquiry into what patriotism means for African Americans. Uh, the, the Vietnam War is the first war that televised into American homes. And I will watch the news. So I'm getting to revisit a lot of stuff I lived through. You know, I, I did a World War II film. I, I was born in 57, war ended in 45, so I wasn't around. So this is much more personal to me. I mean, I was born at the right age where I was old enough to understand what's going on, but not old enough to be drafted. Isaiah Whitlock Jr. plays war vet Melvin, who along with three other fellow vets, head back to Vietnam to look for the remains of their fallen squad commander, as well as retrieve gold they buried Amen. decades ago. What I want the viewer to, to get out of this film is to see just how misrepresent, misrepresented uh, uh, African-Americans were in, in the Vietnam War and in life in some ways. Uh, it, it, it all, all of a sudden the film, in some ways becomes a bit of a metaphor for that misrepresentation. And, um, and hopefully uh, it will excite the viewer to find out more. And then that's when you get into the things like the, the Black Lives Matter and uh, uh, some of the, uh, that's how you start the dialogue about what is happening today and why and what, uh, African-Americans endured in the war and are enduring in this country. Now, Kevin Durant may be known as an NBA superstar, but off the court, he's now a sports team owner. The Brooklyn Nets player has purchased a 5% stake with an option for an additional 5% in the Philadelphia Union of Major League Soccer. He told ESPN in an interview that he's been a fan of the sport. After meeting with executives and touring the union's campus in Chester, Pennsylvania last year, it seemed like a good fit for the star. As he added, quote, they broke everything down from what they wanted to do in the community to the campus that they want to build in Chester, how they want to impact the youth leagues even more and putting it all back in a community that is predominantly black.